The word argument is not exactly new vocabulary. You've been using argument for a very long time. As kids, maybe you argued over who was going to get to look at the cereal box or who got to play with which toy. Um, my kids tend to argue by throwing themselves on the floor, rolling around, kicking, screaming. They throw out consequences like, I'm not going to play with you anymore. As kids, that seems to work in our minds, but um, eventually we have to figure out that that's not the most productive thing. As youth, we outgrow a little bit of it. I think we still throw out things like, I'm not going to be your friend anymore. We don't do quite as much rolling around on the floor, quite as much screaming, at least without the words. However, in too many ways, it does look a lot the same, doesn't it? Um, girls actually still pull hair and and... Girls and boys both do their own share of screaming and begging and crying. So, at that point, what would you imagine if a teacher told you that they wanted you to write an argument? Well, in college, that's exactly what happens. Teachers like me tell you that we want you to write an argument. Hmm, how could I write an argument? Ah, I've got it. I'm going to write the entire paper in all caps. Hmm. Nope, but I don't think that's what the teacher means. Okay, so what could an argument mean for writing? Well, these are some words that we actually should be able to apply to a college level or higher level of argument. And they're not words that we could apply when we were kids or youth having those dramatic little breakdowns. Words like collaboration, cooperation, speaking up, equal ground, empowering, fearless, productive, intelligent. Hmm, argument is a little bit different at this point. Look at this picture. In this picture, they are collaborating. They are cooperating. Everyone there has a voice and can speak up and present their ideas. However, when they present their ideas, they're also expected to be able to explain and defend those ideas. Everyone there has equal ground. They're all probably employees of a big business looking for some type of solution. In an argument such as this, they are all empowered. They are all revered in some way, they all have the ability to think and share their ideas. No one is ignored. Because of that empowerment, they can be fearless in that argument. They, this type of argument is productive and it demonstrates intelligence. Look at these people. Does this resemble your little childhood arguments? Does it resemble your little middle and high school arguments? No. Yet, this is an argument. This is the type of argument that you are going to learn to present. An argument is when you make a claim and you support that claim. I told you in a previous presentation that I love Bloom's Taxonomy, and I was not lying when I said I would bring it up several times. Here it is again, Bloom's Taxonomy, a gauge of higher level thinking skills, something for you to understand your expectations. In a college argument, you are expected to be able to demonstrate all of these thinking skills. Not just knowledge, not just that you know you want something, or even understand why you want it, or know how it could apply, but you need to go all the way up. In any type of higher level argument, that could be in a paper, that could be in a business, that could be in that meeting like you saw in the picture, you're expected to think critically. That's the most important part of an argument, because if you're not thinking critically, how are you ever going to defend, intelligently defend, any position you have on anything. So what is argument in writing?
when you write an essay. I like this little visual of the little kid, but risen above, and he's looking out. He can see all the different positions. He can see them objectively. He can think clearly. He can make a decision based on a lot of information, rather than being in the middle of it, where he has to just defend his own territory and squabble, rather than actually argue, at least in the term of argument that we are saying. So, in writing, you need to take that position, the position that steps back, sees all of the information clearly, so that you can make a clear, educated, intelligent decision, and then, based on that decision or judgment or evaluation, getting back to Bloom's taxonomy, then you can defend it realistically. You can defend it intelligently. You can defend it with something real, something legitimate. A few days ago, two of my kids had an argument over a plate. One said that the plate was red, the other said that it was pink, and they were very adamant and very upset and determined to convince the other one that they were right. They were making claims, it's red, no, it's pink. Really, I think it was light red or maybe dark pink. The point is, though, who cares? Why does it matter? Does it matter? Neither of them actually said why it mattered, they just restated their point over and over. And unfortunately, I get so many college papers that do something very similar. They think that the way to support their claim is to restate the claim. That doesn't tell me anything. Just stating your position is just stating your position, not proving it, not defending it, not supporting it in any way. To make an argument, you don't just say what you think. You tell why it matters. So, whatever your claim is, whatever you believe, fine. But why does it matter? Here's that pyramid again. Let's look at it. All right, now we're talking about writing. We're talking about argument. And we're talking about critical thinking. And we've got to tie them all together. Any essay should demonstrate every level of this. And argument is what helps you do that. Look at the very top. Evaluation. Evaluation in here it gives you a synonym, judgment, to really evaluate something and then prove it. That would be stating a claim and proving it. Now let's throw in that word that scares some of you, thesis. Your evaluation is your thesis statement. So if that thesis statement is good, is arguable, then you have a valid judgment or evaluation and then you have to prove it and you use all those other levels to do so. Synthesis is just putting information together so if you have sources in there that you're explaining the importance of then you're using synthesis. Then as you explain how it all puts together you're breaking it apart and putting it back together that's analysis. Then you're explaining how it applies and you're demonstrating how you understand this and obviously you have that knowledge. So every level of Bloom's Taxonomy is present in a college level argument essay. It really doesn't matter what the assignment is. Normally they're not called arguments. They're called anything. But any type of college essay requires some level of argument because you're always going to make your point and prove it. Even if it's a summary. A summary is what you understand that piece of reading to be about. The way that you interpret it becomes your summary, and you have to defend the way that you view it as you summarize it. So you're making an evaluation and you're supporting it based on the information you're giving about it, so still the summary is an argument. Thesis, point, claim, they're all the same thing. There's good ones and there's bad ones. A good thesis is always arguable. It presents some type of argument. Now this bad example is something that I see a lot. And maybe you've written a lot of something similar in high school because you think, well, it sums up what I'm going to talk about throughout the essay. So it says, I wanted to write about the way Falstaff plays the role of Prince Hell's father. <clears throat> That is an observation, that is an intention, that is your topic, that is not a thesis statement. How can you argue what you want to do? Now you can tell me what you think about something and I can agree or disagree, but I can't 
argue what you want to do. Same thing goes if you try to say, I think, I claim, anything. I can argue your position. I can't argue whether or not you think something. Okay, so I wanted, I think, I claim, all of that. Never, ever, ever put it in a thesis statement. Worst thing ever. Okay, so first thing I wanted, scratch that. Ugh. But then, about the way Falstaff plays the role of it, what's the point? It doesn't matter. Okay, I just wanted to think about this some more. Nobody wants to read that. The good makes a point, an arguable position. Though Falstaff seems to play the role of Hal's father, he is in fact acting more like a younger brother. Who? So now we have a claim, a claim that somebody could disagree with, and we are going to support it by what he's done. There is an arguable claim, or in other words, a great thesis statement. So a thesis statement, to be good, has to be arguable. All right, here's the brief recap. This lesson is about argument, and an argument should be present in every essay you write in college. An argument demonstrates every le level of Bloom's taxonomy, or in other words, all types of critical thinking skills. An argument is stating a claim and proving it. Not bickering, but arguing professionally, intelligently. State a claim and prove it.